Hello everyone, my name is HKH191. Welcome back to part to episode two of how to create mods. So in last episode we covered how to spawn in vehicles and heads, uh, how to set up markers and a teleport, and a couple other things. In this video I'll be showing you how to create a native UI menu, how to tinker around with the player settings, and how and how to customize a vehicle via the scripts. So let's get into it. So I'm going to be using our file from last episode. So I recommend using that. So first thing we need to do to get our menus to work for native UI is add in using native oops, sorry using native UI but it doesn't pop up pop up pop up there. So you need to go into references and find the cursor. Oh, there we go. Uh, references, add reference, native UI. And then you go using using native UI. And it just pops up like that. And so once you've got that in, you'll need to create a couple of things. You'll need to create a mod menu pool or menu pool um, and two um, UI menus to start off with. So let's do that. So public uh, is it menu pool? Yeah, menu pool. Public UI menu. UI menu, and then you can just name it main menu. Oh, UI menu again. Oops. And then you can name it whatever you want. So let's go play the settings. Play the settings menu. And then I'm going to create another UI menu for later. And I'll get into what I'm doing with that one a bit later. So that one. So then, what you want to do is you want to go. You want to go into your class one and add mod menu pool equals equals new menu pool. And then main menu equals new UI menu. UI menu. And then you'll have to put in two strings. The first string is the header. And then the second string is basically what the what um, is the little caption bar. So I'm going to name it main menu. And then I'm going to go select an option and then this and it was a semicolon then you go mod menu pool dot add main menu close off the brackets and what you want to do is you want to go so now we're going to get to this player settings menu so you can just grab that equals mod menu pool dot add sub menu so equals mod menu pool dot add sub menu and then this will be the menu that this is from so you go so you'll put in here mod menu so, sorry no you go sorry you won't do that you go you put in here main menu and then what you want the menu to be called so player settings So once you've got that, come down into on tick, because that's the next thing you want to do. Now, if you just do it here, you'll get an error because of the fact that you haven't declared your, well, your basically your uh, menu will not pop up yet. 
because you need to do something in the on tick stance. So if you come down here before anything starts, you need to go, or preferably after the on key down, you need to go if mod menu pool does not equal null, null uh, and and mod menu pool dot is any menu open equals equals true then brackets keep it like that and then you want to type in mod menu pool dot process menus uh, that one and just like that cool sorry about that then you'll need so okay so now if you go into that mod menu mod, that menu there'll be nothing there so let's create what's in there so go public void a setup and I'm just going to call it play menu and just drop that and just put that there Whoop. oh yeah. one second Where are we? Where are we? Oh. Then what you want to go, so this is where you can start putting in all your buttons. So go in here and go UI menu. Oops. And then go, I just call it sub menu most of the times. Equals mod menu hall. Dot add submenu like like up here but instead of calling this menu you want to call this one so you want to go in here and go player settings menu then comma and then go and then call it what you want Oh yeah, let's create a button. So you can create a button by going UI menu, whoops, sorry, UI menu item. And let's give them some cash. So I'm going to give them 100k. If I can type, equals new UI menu item. And then, and then you need to actually add the button to the to your actual sub menu. So I mean, sub menu. So what you need to go is you need to go sub menu dot add item, and then whatever you called your button. And so that's just how you create a button. And now let's get it when you let's get the code when you when you click when you um, hit it. Or click on it. So you need to go sub menu dot on item select plus equals send up item index. What? Plus send up item. One sec, guys. What am I missing? I'm missing something. In brackets.
Hmm. Okay, I think I'm missing something. Let's have a look. That is odd, okay. Uh, just bear with, bear with me a moment, guys. That's odd. Send item index. Using an API. Wait, do I actually? Yeah. Um. Wait, is it actually sure different? No, it just doesn't like it. Wait, okay. Um, I think I've got it, guys. Oh, yeah, well, I've never encountered that before. Equals and then greater than. And then what you want to do is you want to put bracket, open space, then you want to have a semicolon after it. Okay, that's, yeah, so that's really weird. So I didn't know that. And then what you want to do is to, to grab, get to, um, grab when this button is clicked all you want to do is if item equals cash and the button name and you can just go game.player.now in game.player.character and game.player and game.player there is um, variables for both for both money I don't know what the um, character money is used for but this this one has always worked for me. The game dot player dot money, and then you just want to go a hundred thousand. Okay, so let's let's figure out how it's now many. So again, we're going to need um, a new marker and a new set of coordinates. Really can't I put okay, never mind. So let's just grab here. And go public vector three, uh, and then go menu open chord. And go new vector three and I'm just gonna grab them and go so it's minus sixteen twenty nine. Minus three one six seven six fifty three I think. Yep. And then go again twelve point five. Cause that's the height of the floor. Oh, right missing comma and then and then and then again all you want to do is just drop this into here and just let's just copy these
and just grab a um, UI thing here and it should look like that and then so for control input you want to do if game dot key just pressed I think is is control is control just press to gta dot control dot context I'm pretty sure yep and then you want to come up here and so we're wanting to we're wanting to open this menu here so main menu so copy and paste it down here and go main menu visible equals does not main menu dot visible and that should work and that should work so let's go test that And then what you want to do is just change before you do that. Just change the um, UI thing to display input context in little you know, like squirrely lines to open menu. Hit build and build solution, and drag and drop the DLL into scripts. Should load up. Alright, so as you can see, our marker's there, and we hit E, our marker, our marker pops up, and our button works. Alright. So we can also do a list as well with the buttons. It's a little bit more complicated. Just one sec. I find an example. Alright, so for, for a list, what you want to do is, instead of doing a button like that, what you want to do is... You want to go UI menu list item. And I'm just going to call it list is equal to UI menu item. And then it's going to have three, three variables to go inside here. Um, basically, what it is, like I have 100,000, so I'm just going to call it list. Um, the actual list you're loading in, so I'm just gonna load it. Carl, I'm just gonna call it Carl. So now I'll create it in a second, and an uh, integer for what it starts on. So I'm just gonna put it as zero. So that's the first one. Close that off, and then go sub menu. Dot add item, and then go and then for me it's list, and then. But it can do whatever you, you want. So now it's obviously freaking out because we haven't created lists, the cars. Just make sure to do that. So what you want to do is you want to go. You want to go list dynamic cars equals new list dynamic. So go new whoops sorry list dynamic D dynamic cars equals new list dynamic like so and then Let's 
It's not liking that. Why is it? Oh, you need to put new in front of it. Sorry. And now, if you try to do it, it's going to give you an error because there's nothing in cars. So you actually need to add something. So let's add a couple of cars. And now they're in vehicle hash. So make sure it's a vehicle hash. Now you can have. All you need is one thing, but I'm gonna have a couple more so I can show you. So, and then you should see that. So I'm gonna create another button to actually get that car. And then let's go grab that function we created to create the vehicle. Ah, oh, here it is. And then instead of narrow, what you want to do is you want to go. Sorry, is you want to go cars in in square brackets list dot index and that will create whatever whatever um, this is up to whatever whatever index this is up to it'll create so zero one two if it's up to two it'll create the adder if it's on one it'll create the narrow custom if it's on zero it'll create the narrow so let's let's take a look at that Whoops. Reload the mod and just wait. And that looks like And so now you have a list, so you can go like this. Hit car and it should scroll. Right, let's just comment out that method that's spawning the vehicles. And just rebuild and drop it into scripts folder. Alright, so once you've got that Work. And that's basically the basics of creating a um, a menu. Um, a little later in the series, I will be going on to um, grabbing things um, from a list when you're actually going through it. So actually checking what it is when you're actually scrolling through. So if you have like two lists. You can cha change it, the second list based on what the first list was equal to. But now let's jump into customizing a vehicle. I'm just gonna grab one of these. This is the recommended dose. In fact, I could. Let's just turn the radio off. So let's start with the color. So I'm going to actually grab this and just change it. So, so. You'll get an error if you try to um, change any part of the any part of the player's vehicle if a player is not in a vehicle. So you need to go if game dot player dot character dot current vehicle does, does not equal null. Current vehicle does not equal null. And then what, you can, then what you can do is you can go and you can go vehicle or var car, whatever you want to do. Car equals game.player.character.current vehicle. And then you can go car dot equals and now this is all the variables you can use. So you have like primary color, display name, bunch of others. So I'm gonna grab primary, primary and secondary color. Uh, 
husband and father. Right. And then it'll be in car co it'll be in vehicle colour and not colour. So you're gonna go vehicle colour and you can choose any of these, so let's go something noticeable. And you can do the same with the secondary colour as well. And wheel colour and whatnot. So if we, if we now reload the mod, that should work. So just hit INS and that should work. Oh yeah, so if you press E now, it'll change it to whatever colour you set. So let's get into modifying it, and I think I'm going to use a narrow 2 instead. Because they have quite a bit of customization. Let's get into, let's get into customising it. So I am going to show you through the, the enhanced native train what to look out for. Uh, so let's get something that has quite a lot of variables. Like quite a lot of, um, how do you call it, modifications. Let's go liveries. So now with customising a car, you would think it starts at zero. Cus with adding a modification, you would think it starts at zero but it starts at minus one. So, say, so the um, highlight object would be minus one. This would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So let's set it to, Nice let's set it to let's set it to let's set it to two. So what you want to do so you want to go back into your script and you want to go car dot set mod set mod vehicle mod and these are all the mods you can do basically on any car. There are some like the um, new blades from Arena Wall that actually require require you to reference their actual number. See, like aerials is forty three, liveries is forty eight, and so on. And so you need to go livery is two or whatever number you chose for the livery, and and true. And then hit build and let's test if that works. So let's set back to the normal livery and reload the mod. Let's grab a car again because that obviously needs spawn. And now you can see it actually didn't work because you actually need a call and method before you call car.setMod. So what you need to call is you need to go, so let me find the right thing. Just give me one second. You need to call, you need to actually call a function. So, now do be aware with calling these, they can cause your game to crash. Be very careful about using them in the dispose method below. Because if you pass a um, wrong or you didn't pass 
um, the correct variable or missing variable, your game would your game your game would crash. So you need to go function whoop, function dot call hash dot set vehicle mod kit. So the hash dot set vehicle set the vehicle oh god really set vehicle oh my god really okay I'm just gonna copy and paste it set vehicle mod kit and then and you need to call two variables you need to call your vehicle's handle and an integer so you go car dot handle and then zero um with other function calls, I will be covering this later on about different ones you can use. So just hang tight for that. But for now, let's test if that works now. So hit rebuild and drop the DLL into scripts. Oh, this is a big spawn, but there's one over here. the script worked and so yeah so you'll need to call that before you start modifying the vehicle and that's about it for t that's about it for this episode I hope you guys enjoyed like and subscribe and if you have any questions or comments um, you can leave them in the comment section of the video or you can contact me on discord